In this video, I will show you how to configure PPPoE on MicroTik router. PPPoE is commonly used by internet service providers to deliver internet access services to their customers, typically over broadband connections. I will also show you how to configure WAN failover. WAN failover tests your internet connections, and when one slows or fails, it can reroute network traffic over the remaining connections, maximizing your uptime. This is very useful if you have multiple WAN connections. In other words, WAN failover is the method of allowing WAN connections to back up each other. Let's begin. In the previous video, I showed you how to configure the LAN bridge. Also, we have configured VLANs and assigned them to this interface which are VLANs 5 and VLAN 100. The LAN bridge has multiple interface members which are ports 2, 3, 4 and 5. In other words, we combine these ports together to one virtual interface. I also showed you how to configure the WAN interface using DHCP and also using static IP address. Now, since I have two WAN connections then we will use the other connection to configure PPPoE on different WAN interface. We will use this port 6 to configure the PPPoE. We can modify the name for our reference. We can give a name of WAN PPPoE. Click OK to apply the changes. We can also modify the WAN 1 or first WAN link to WAN DHCP since the mode is DHCP. The best practice is to always configure the names for reference. Now, go to PPP. Under Interface, click on the plus sign. Choose PPPoE Client. Under General, we can modify the name. We can give WAN2, PPPoE for our reference. Next is choose the interface where you want to configure the PPPoE which in our case, it's port 6. Now, go to Dialout tab. Enter the PPPoE username and password. These are the details provided by your internet service provider or ISP. Make sure to enter the correct details. If incorrect then it will be unsuccessful. Next is to make sure to enable the add default route. This will automatically create the default static route, so no need for you to configure it. For the default route distance, this will only concern you if you have multiple WAN connections or VPN configured. In our case, this is our second WAN connection so we need to modify the distance. Let's give a distance of 5. The WAN 1 or the port 1 has a distance of 10. I configured a lower distance which is 5 because I want all the traffic to go through this interface. Just so you know, lower distance comes first. So if this PPPoE or WAN 6 fails then the traffic will fail over to WAN 1 or port 1 which has a higher distance. Click OK to apply the changes. You can now see the newly created PPPoE interface. Under Interfaces, notice also the PPPoE interface has been added. If we go back to the PPP interface, let's check the status. You can see it's still blank, it's because I haven't plugged the cable yet. I will plug in my WAN2 cable now to port 6. Now, we are connected. You can see the connection details from here. You can see the connection date and time. The connection uptime. The MTU size. The IP address received. The gateway etc. We can also go to traffic and you can see here the transmit and receive traffic for this interface. The same goes for the interfaces. You can see the transmit and receive traffic. Since we have two WAN connections then I will show you how the failover works. Let's go back to PPP and check the PPPoE configuration for our WAN2 which is port 6. Under dial out. We set the distance to 5. Next is we will check the distance of WAN 1 or port 1 using DHCP mode. Go to IP. DHCP client. You can see here the port 1 configuration which is DHCP. Click on it. Go to the advanced tab. You can see the default route distance is 10. It has a higher distance than WAN 2 or port 6 so this will be the backup. If you want the traffic to run to this interface or if you want to use this WAN connection as your primary then change the distance. 
change it to any number lower than 5? We can change to 4 or any number lower than 5 then all the traffic will pass through this interface. Alternatively, you can change the current connection distance to any number higher than 10. Again, lower distance comes first. So any WAN connection which has the lowest distance will handle the traffic going out to the internet. Now, let's do a test if the PPPoE configuration was successful and if we can access the internet. Before we do that, we can disable the port 1 or WAN 1 assuming you have a single WAN connection and just to test the internet. No worries, we will enable it also later, this is just for comparison. Let's check my current IP address settings. You can see that I received the IP address of 192.168.5.200. This was from admin network or VLAN 5. We configured these addresses, DHCP and DNS on the previous video. Let's now try to ping google.com. Success! We can access the internet through the PPPoE WAN link. You can see the transmit and receive traffic. Let's do a continuous ping to google.com. Notice the traffic is consistent. Let's check the routes. Go to IP. Routes. You can see the default static route for the PPPoE which has a distance of 5. We cannot see the WAN 1 or port 1 because we disabled the port. Let's enable back the WAN 1 or port 1. If we check back the routes, we can now see the port 1 or WAN 1 default route which has a distance of 10. The traffic is all going to the PPPoE because it has a lower distance. Since we enabled back the port 1 then let's do a test again. Let's open back the command prompt. We will do a continuous ping to google.com. You can see it's all going to the PPPoE since it has a lower distance which is 5. The WAN DHCP will only take over if the PPPoE is down or have some issue. However, you can route some traffic to WAN DHCP if you prefer. I will show you how it's done on the next video. If we open back the addresses. You can see the addresses we configured for LAN and also for admin which is the VLAN 5. You can also see the IP addresses automatically received by the WAN connections which is the DHCP and the PPPoE. For some countries, they require VLAN tagging for the data traffic and different VLAN for voice. In the next video, I will show you how to configure PPPoE with VLAN tagging. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.